Right, so today in the UAE tour was probably the best thing you can see if you want to know more about time trial tech, which is a team time trial. Now, what this goes to show is not just who is the best time trialist, but also like how the team generally approaches time trials. And what you'll see is the teams that do well in this discipline often are very good at time trialing. Not 100% because Yumbo had a shocker, but generally, you know, quick step, always good at time trials. They've got specialized, they'd go to the wind tunnel, um, they've got good equipment. EF, they've taken it more and more seriously. They spent more money on it and they're always good. Ineos, obviously. Bahrain, surprise, they've got better. Jacob Alula, um, they signed uh, in the off season last year. Uh, Marco Pinotti, who's really good at time trials, he helped BMC a lot. He, they obviously won uh, two stages in the Giro on the individual time trial, Yates and their Battistella, was it? Uh, and anyway, DSM, okay, like not great. UAE, this goes to show, in my opinion, that like they're specialists. They really help out, but a lot of the other guys, they don't. Astana did okay, but, you know, and then you look at further down and you see Israel, not surprising. Um, as you deserve, Mobistar, like you, you start to see the teams who don't invest in the time trial as much. Um, they do a lot worse in this discipline. So uh, we'll go over to some power first, then we'll look at, well, it's more speed than power. And then we'll, we'll look at some equipment and, pay, and strategies that I can kind of show you. Uh, and how they do it. So this is the time trial. Now, it was very close to the top. The first, you know, more or less the same. I mean, three, four seconds over this distance is, is not much, but it goes to show on the time, the team time trial, because the speeds are so high, uh, it's kind of crazy to actually like to get a second or two is kind of crazy, but you can see like 57 kilometers an hour almost. Um, we'll, we'll get onto the, the chain rings in a bit because I think that's an interesting point. But first we'll just look at Fran Mihailovic. Um, not the most unbelievable was Pekito, but very strong effort. 390 normalized for 17 minutes now. What you'll see is that it's quite obvious when he's doing a turn on the front. You can see these four sections where it's very, very smooth. Uh, and that's where he's doing his turn. Now, what's interesting to see is the kind of length of turn. Generally, you'll see on almost all team time trials at World Tour level, uh, they'll have 500 watts for, th for 30 seconds is kind of the gold standard, it seems. More or less, that's what they do. I think it will depend. Let's say you're a smaller guy, maybe Chavez, you'll do 500 watts, but you'll just do it for like 15 seconds, 10 seconds, you know. But the, the numbers on the front are almost always around that 450, 500 watt range. Um, but what you'll see, and that everyone who's ever done a team time trial will know, is that actually the, the hardest thing is always the effort to get back on. And you can see as soon as he, he, he eases off and then this big effort to get back on is actually almost as hard. And then you can see soft tap again. Now he's on the wheel. And I think that goes to show. So if we actually look at kind of like the peak, um, the peak 400, uh, peak five minute power is 400 watts here. And you can see there's one of his efforts and a big spike to get back on almost 700 watts. And then you can see he's in the wheels and it's very up and down. And if it was a heart rate, it would slowly come down. And then you can see, again, he's cracking out his effort here. So it's not actually a huge rest. If you kind of look in between the spikes, it's only three minutes, um, which I guess makes sense. There's teams of seven riders. Is seven riders right? One, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven riders. So 30 seconds each, you'd expect about, about three minutes then in between. So it, it is hard, this discipline. Um, and in addition, the, the corners are always tough because, okay, you freewheel into the corner, but then the surge out of it, especially if you're sixth or seventh wheel, can, can be hard. And if you, you know, you're on the limit, you slightly mistake a corner, it's not great. You can see here a big sprint towards the end. But sort of this is a file you'd expect to see across, across a lot of guys. Like there's not too much individualization. Obviously, the stronger you are, the more likely you're going to do longer turns. So the numbers will be a little bit higher. But yeah, you can go see go and see here kind of like more numbers McNulty's I, I don't know if all these are correct but but anyway it's kind of um interesting to see more or less what power they're doing um so we'll go over to cycling news now um and we'll have a little look at some of the positions and kind of the the strategy so one thing we'll talk about um was with just the speed so Remco's on a 60 tooth and apparently none of the rest of his team was so when it got really quick there was a point he said they were going 70k an hour um, that actually he was the only one who could really push it. You can see like here's like, I think this bit here was a real table win, getting close to 70k an hour. He was the only guy who could ride. And I, I do think for the team time trial, they should go 62 minimum. B 
because you never want to be in the 11. It's incredibly inefficient because the chain has to articulate massively round. Plus, the chain line is not optimal because you're you're bending it slightly because it's not going straight. So I really think for the team time trial on this, you've got to be on a 62. Like, there's no downside. Um, I, I guess maybe there's more drag on a 62 tooth. I, I don't know. But, you know, from a drivetrain efficiency, it's 100%. And also from just from a, like a mechanical, like, efficiency of being able to pedal that much. Um what you'll see again is just interesting how they position the riders. Obviously, Remco is incredibly aero, so the guy behind will not be getting much draft. So you probably actually want to have one of your strongest people. Um, you either want to have your strongest or weakest guy behind. If you have your weakest guy, they just do a very soft turn, and then the person behind them can do a strong turn. Or you have your strongest rider who can can hack not having the wind and then do a really big turn. It's kind of interesting how you place it. It's also interesting how you do your sprinter versus your endurance guy because the sprinters are really good at this because they can punch through really hard and get back on. Um, but you also might want a more endurance type rider to kind of even it out. Um, here's the F again, like pretty nice equipment. The Cannondale slice, it looks good, a lot better than previously. A couple guys on the POC tempo, a couple guys on the normal POCs. Um, positions looking all decent. Ineos again on their outrageous Princeton Carbon Works wheels. Always nice to see the new era helmet as well. Dan Biggum's obviously helping them out quite a, mat, quite a lot. Um, you can see here again, like uh, just the way they're swapping off and everything. Generally, it's, you know, like... You might have two lines, you might not. It kind of just depends exactly um, the position. And then you can see uh, Jacob Alula still on the on the rim brake trinities. Um, and like, you kind of look at them and you're like, okay, they shouldn't be good at time trials. But I think it's kind of underrated. Maybe the giant rivet helmet is not as bad as it looks. And maybe the, this frame is decent. The four spoke and the disc are okay because they do get good results. So in my opinion, the, the uh, materials, as people say, must be okay for them. Uh, DSM, I think good at good equipment uh maybe not the helmet but scott seem okay uh but they never they never seem to do unreal in the time trials bore another specialized team you always expect to do well um you know the seventh place you know they probably didn't have their a grade time trial squad like yumbo definitely didn't but you can see um uae emirates here again like nice equipment okay they've got mbs and all the rest of it but you can see like they're obviously just not as drilled and maybe some of these positions not as good um as you'd expect because they did not go quick um, and Astana did okay, nice equipment again, Lima helmets, always questionable, but Willia, I mean, the kind of time trial bikes, I, it's hard to say how much is there really is in it in some of them, because I feel like there's a base level of just, like, integrates everything, and then they're all pretty similar-ish, I think it's more like the marginal things of, like, where the fork is, is it wide, is it narrow, I think it's kind of the more, the more mute points when you look at it, um, and what you also see often on a team time trial, which Trek are doing, is that the final rider, they might be coming out of a corner uh, on this, but but ignore that anyway. Often you'll see the final rider will sit up. So what this does is it's obviously an error penalty of the final rider, but what it means is when this person's dropping back, they get a bigger draft. And they've obviously, that's one of the hardest part of the team time trials, sliding back into the line. So if this person sits up, it's really easy. Well, it's not really easy. It's a lot easier or just easier to get back on because you're getting a bigger draft. And this person... Okay, they're doing a little bit more watts, but they're so far from the front, it's probably marginal. Um, and also they've got a long time to recover. And I think teams often do that um, in order to try and help the person get back on, especially maybe if it's a smaller rider, a less powerful rider um, who's done the turn, it might make even more sense. You know, if it's someone like people Ganner, it probably is not gonna make as much of a difference. But if you're, again, talking about someone small, uh, especially a GC leader, you need to keep them, then that can be a really effective way of doing it. Um, Yumbo, always nice equipment, I guess just not the best riders uh, or whatever, but you know, they, they, they're they serious about time trials. Wanty, Intermarche, Gobert, people, they're always decent. Um, I don't think the bikes are quick. I don't think they spend enough money. I think I think they could be good at it. I just don't think they spend the money on it because they don't have the kind of riders. Maybe Taco Vanderhorn. I mean, Rui Costa's got numbers, so he could probably do an okay TT, but like, it's just, you know, it's not a focus, so they don't spend as much money. FDJ, they'll be a bit disappointed because they have a good squad for this, uh, you know, all sprinters and, you know, you'd expect them to go well. They also do, you know, they've all got, every single person on the team's got integrated, like custom bars. So they're probably not crazy happy about that. Israel at Israel, they're just useless at this stuff. Like, I, I don't know why they're so bad at it. They always seem to have nice equipment maybe, but maybe the factor's not as nice, but they're just, they're just not very good at it. Um, I guess for a pro Conti team now, you know, maybe it's okay. As you deserve the same, like they just... You know, there's big, there's big panache. They've got decent equipment, but I think just as a team, they're not super focused on it. Like Ben O'Connor can do well because I think he focuses on it, but in general, you know, it's not, 
It's not one of their strongest disciplines. And I think there's no need to make it that strong discipline, uh, except if you've got a GC contender, because team time trials are kind of dead in grand tours. Um, Movis star, you know, they've got the one by, which is nice to see, but then the flat top chin is so is so bad. It's not great. You know, it was zips are, are quick up for sure. And the Canyon frame, I reckon will be quick as well. So no real excuses there. Maybe the helmet, the helmet is just tears, but you know, that is what it is. Uh, Lotto, yeah, again, it's a pro Conti team. What do we expect? Like them just don't, not going to put, um, the kind of budget and it's like emphasis on it for all the riders. And that's what you see in the team, team time trial. And Alperson, I mean, Jay Vine's openly spoken that they just don't care about time trials. And he, he was like, yeah, it's just a lost cause. I don't even know if they're on disc brake canyons. I think they might be on the old one. They're on the Abus helmet. I, it's just not a priority, which is just fine. Like, you know, it is what it is. There's no need to kind of mug them off. Tudor again, Pro Conti, like BMC is for sure. Asos is nice, but it's just no chance. And last but not least, the Green Project, Bardi on a GSF. They're, again, I mean, they're, just like, they're on a Cipollini TT bike that's really old. Like, you know, they probably barely ride that bike and it's, it's fine. It is what it is. But it is interesting to see if you look at the speed differential, like how wild it is that they went 57 and they went 52. Like that minute 40 is pretty mental. Like, I don't know what happened there, but... And then even these guys, like a 50 seconds back, like is, is big, um, is, is big. And I think it goes to show just the difference in like your kind of focus on it is, is large. But anyway, I hope you did enjoy this video. Um, if you did, whack a like, please, and a subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.